Here am I distilling ethanol. I'm just basically using an air condenser right now because I don't have a pump a pump currently. As you can see the temperature is rising. Okay. So I'll be back when it's done distilling. Well start boiling. Okay, the temperature is now 55 about 55 degrees and it has now started to boil we haven't collected no distillate as yet in the collection beaker i'll be back when it's done reflect i mean i mean distilling i mean well, start collecting it first distill it. Uh, yeah. And notice I'm not using heat from a flame. That is very important. Unless you want to kill yourself or burn down your house or something. And always keep something to extinguish a fire nearby. I have a pipe near me, so... Now it's 70 degrees. Well, going to 74 degrees. And about there is a boiling point of ethanol, which you are distilling. Okay, I am about to get my first drops of distillate. Just waiting for it. Hmm. Oh, okay. I think I see. Okay. That was our first drop of distillate. And the trick is if you smell ethanol fumes before the distillates are coming over and you have no distillate, you should turn down the heat so yeah I'll be back okay the temperature is a steady 76 degrees Celsius mm, actually it's the navy a little bit above that take a look where is that okay yeah as you can see mm. Yeah, so I'll be back. Okay, the temp is getting quite high. Well, higher than I expected. But I'll just collect the distillate until 85 degrees. Uh, this doesn't really contain a lot of water, actually. It just contains castor oil and um, methyl salicylate, which is basically... I got this ethanol I'm distilling from surgical spirits. It may contain denaturing agents, but I don't really care about that, so yeah. And denaturing um denatured alcohol most times contain a little water. But this usually don't. Hello and today I'll show you how to oxidize ethanol with ammonium dichromate and dilute ferric acid firstly you will need to add some ethanol this is 100 percent into a test tube i'll not be doing any exact measurements but you would see the oxidation and now add dilute sulfuric acid this is kind of very dilute should say now you would add potassium dichromate here is potassium dichromate take a spatula of some sort 
to scoop up a bit of crystals of it. And now this, I think this would be enough. Okay. Now close the potassium dichromate. And begin to swirl the test tube. Try and get all to dissolve. Okay. Now put it back into the stand here. Oops. And close it shut. Yeah, now this is basically the oxidation, but what would happen is that it will turn green. Now, this usually happens with heat, so I'll try and get a heat source. Okay, I have a heat source. You can already see the oxidation, and it's turned a little bit darker. So, just like this. You don't have to eat it very much. Just going to let it boil. Okay. See, I'm not sure if that's a suit from the flame, but trying to wipe it off. My hands. Nope, that was not from the suit from the flame. You can clearly see a green color. You can clearly see it. But it it will get darker and darker the longer you leave it. And this is not suit at the bottom actually. I have no idea what it is. It's probably uh oh yeah now it's green. It's totally green. Might not be able to see it that much on camera. Let me try and go further back. Okay. And zoom in. Uh nope, I don't think you can see it. But it's green, it's green. You might have to just take my word for it. Since I'm not sure how this is going to show up. You can actually try this experiment at home, but be careful since potassium, uh, I mean, comet, or comet sauce, I should say, uh, they can cast eugenic so be careful when you're doing this experiment bye